I, I call it drive by painting. Um, you're driving down the road and all of a sudden you see a scene and it's gone in less than a second because you're, well, maybe because I'm speeding on the highway, um, but it's gone and you turn around, you go back and it's only in a, a certain place where all those elements, the light, the light and dark shapes um, come together where it all works for you internally. I have a series of uh, uh, paintings, uh, field studies that I did that I just popped into frames for this to show you guys a little bit about what I was chasing and then how I want to talk about how I think about composition, um, okay. which is a little bit uh, not as traditional as uh, other artists, I think. Okay, so I think one thing to, to, to say is because there are so many people tuning in from, from all over the world. I, I haven't checked comments yet today, but I guarantee you there's people all over the world. And there are people who are at different levels and there are terms that we use that sometimes are not terms that they know. And okay. I think everybody knows the, the idea of composition, but I don't know that everybody knows why it's so darned important. Can you explain that? Uh, from, in my opinion, I think composition holds your entire painting together. It's, um, it's the composition and, and the impact that it has from across the room is something that will draw somebody from farther back and then they want to explore closer uh, to see the the detail or uh, just the, the yummy brushwork that's happening. And uh, composition is is so important um, to me. Uh, and I think more importantly is your value structure. So I kind of correlate composition and the, the value structure within your, your painting. Um, uh, when I teach, I teach both those kind of at the same time. So we start talking about large shapes, simplifying shapes, uh, before you really even think about tree branches and, um, you know, fingernails or the, the highlight in your eyeball or the, the highlight on a, a teapot if you're painting a, uh, you know, still life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, okay. Makes sense. So what do you got to show us? Do you want me to show some of the images I have or do you? Um, uh, let me let me just hold up a couple of my field studies that I right. did. And okay. if that's OK with you. Of course, you don't need my permission. Um, so this is a little uh, uh, I was along the Tuolumne River in uh, Yosemite and mm. painting the light effect across the the still water. It was kind of like a stained glass effect. And I've got this, you know, nice movement, um, you know, running through and to lead you. Well, this is awkward doing it backwards. <laughs> uh, but we get it. We get it. Okay. Um, so I, 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 want to, I want to make a comment about that because <clears throat> that I think I know the spot. It looks it looks like a spot that, that, that I know I may not be right about it. But if you were to zoom out of that spot, uh, and look above those trees behind you. There's probably a big giant mountain back there. Uh, oh, yeah, this probably doesn't look too much like Yosemite. Actually, no, this is um, right at, just past the bridge where the bridge crosses the Tuolumne okay. River right before you get to, um, uh, you, you start to end, exit the, the park. But the point, of, the point I actually was going to make is that, oh, but, but sometimes... You know, it, what I love about people like you is that, you know, we'll go to a place like Yosemite yeah. to, and to get seduced yeah. by painting El Capitan. Yeah. And yet, you know, I'll take, I'll take painters in there and some of them are like focusing on the river right there and focusing on a, on a yeah. bush when El Capitan is the background. And I think that takes so much courage because we, you know, we went all the way there and it's so beautiful. And, and so how, how do you deal with that? Because I, that's one thing I have a hard time with. It's like, well, this is what I really want to paint, but maybe I should paint that because I came all this way. Well, this actually leads me into a topic that I wanted to bring up a little later, but this is a great lead into this, um, Eric. I think composition is, um, we have, we're given rules about composition. Uh, uh, you know, the steel yard, the L shape, a circular composition. 
Um, but I also think we also have an internal, um, an internal voice that we're drawn to. And I think the easiest way to find that is to be, uh, to realize, I, I call it drive by painting. Um, you're driving down the road and all of a sudden you see a scene and it's gone in less than a second because you're, well, maybe because I'm speeding on the highway, um, but it's gone. And you turn around, you go back, and it's only in a, a certain place where all those elements, the light, the light and dark shapes um, come together where it all works for you internally. And you can drive down the road and I can see my friend Kevin Quarters painting as it drives by. I go, oh man, he'd be painting that. As, as I go past. And it's, I think when you start to see somebody's work and recognize it, you realize they have a personal uh, a compositional tools that, that, that comes out from, from inside, not just a, a learned um, uh, thing. So for me, I became aware of when the light comes together and shapes come together, or there's um, a lighting condition that is gonna be fleeting, I'll tackle that before I'll take on the grand, the grand scene, the more grandeur like of um, El Capitan or Half Dome. I certainly have my fair share of, um, you know, Half Dome in winter, spring, summer, and fall, and uh, you know those iconic uh, shapes and and more grandeur like uh, paintings. But I think when I'm out in the field and it's most important to kind of capture the the color, the quality of the light. Um, the immediacy of the feeling that I'm getting there. And that doesn't necessarily mean that I need to paint the entire scene. If I just yeah. capture a little bit of the Tuolumne River with the, with the sun striking through the, the trees and it creates this beautiful stained glass effect on the water. And then I want to include some of the more grandeur uh, uh, pieces of granite that are maybe behind there then I have all this information that's a little bit more accurate than my photographs to bring right. into my studio. Okay, cool. Does that answer that? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Nice job. Thank you. All Go. right. So I'm letting you continue. Oh, okay, great. This is um, me letting you continue. <laughs> thank you. Um, so just, a, I just have a couple more um, paintings that I did. We were, um, uh, traveling up towards uh, South Lake, which is just outside of Bishop, California. And uh, we were following Bishop Creek down, painting uh, the creek on, down. And so this was um, a little fall color. Mm. There we go. Uh, that I got. This is part of Bishop Creek here. What I was, I was really loving the warm and cool relationships between the, this grove uh, was super, super orange. Um, not the, the typical yellow uh, that I've seen. Uh, this whole family of trees um, of aspens uh, were just this beautiful orange, and I love the the comparison, the um, the warm and cool. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so um, like the, um, this, this begs another question. Colors. <laughs> this begs another question, which is. Uh, <laughs> The temptation, and uh, I, I, this is one I fall into and I'm working on right now, the temptation is to make everything as, as uh, bright and colorful as we see it and to do that everywhere. What are your thoughts on that? I probably have more of a tendency to use more uh, intense color over all. I have, a, I have a harder time graying down my colors in order to support the... Um, the center of interest or um, as I was, who was I just listening to uh, Ken Bacchus. I was just listening to a webinar about him and he was talking about the idea versus the, uh, the, um, you know, how, how to, to um, orchestrate a painting. And um, so I have a tendency to, and I love color, more intense color. So I'm, I'm less likely to gray something else out in order to support that. Now, when you're dealing with a, a sunset or um, that kind of thing, I, I think of color more in terms of color fields, I think, more so than, um, I mean, I'll just pull this back up. So I did, I definitely wanted this 
Aspen to be the star of the show here. Right. Uh, so I did intentionally, I guess now that I'm, you're doing I great. Did intentionally brighten and uh, made this a little bit more chromatic. These rusty, ooh, this is so backwards. Let me do it this way. Um, these rusty areas of orange are just a hair darker in value so that they sit back and this one pops forward. So maybe I, I do think about it that way, but I, I'm less likely to gray it down. Um, and they were all, unless they're going back in space, but they're, they were pretty much on the same middle ground plane yeah. there. Yeah. Okay. Terrific. Thank you. Okay, cool. Um, this one was just up the road. Bishop Creek was behind me. And these, I think these three paintings are a little bit more traditional uh, in their, you know, in what I'm seeking. You, know, you kind of get the, the bigger picture. You know, I have, uh, you know, the background, middle ground and foreground and lighting effects going on. But what I think today I want to talk to you about is um, something that I've been ruminating over when I'm on location or in the studio is, is trying to get more abstraction in what it is that I'm painting mm -hmm. and um, trying to rely less on the kind of standard, um, you know, where your focal point is, uh, you know, just trying to move the eye around, trying to uniquely move my eye around my paintings. <laughs> um, so hold on, just set this down. So when I was out there, um, I, did this little piece, which I really enjoyed. I, my approach to it was much, much different. I just thought of it in terms of color fields and that, and this is my piece that I will, gosh darn it, <laughs> um, that I'll be using as reference for the larger work. Uh, what I really liked was just kind of having this general color field here and um, organizing the darks to help support all the lights. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to do just work and talk about those elements. Um, Let's do it. Okay, cool. Um, so here uh, is based on this. And then you also have a photograph of the reference. It's, it's going to be kind of based on this. And then right, my let me photo see reference. If I can pull that up. While you're doing that, I'm going to move these paintings so I don't kick them. Okay, so we have a photograph of the reference. Um, okay, so that's the, the the that's the reference I'm going to be painting. This is from. the reference. This is and the field study. That's the painting that I did in the field. Okay. That's the painting I did in the field, and then I'm going to be utilizing this reference. Okay. Uh, for this larger piece. All right. Terrific. And what I want to talk to you about is. Uh, there was a little video that I sent. Let me t say a couple things about it, and then I'll let you, if, if you don't mind showing the the video, the time lapse that yep. I did uh, in creation, creating this to this point. This is what I call a, a, a pastel underpainting. When I talk about composition, the first things that I do in the studio generally are to take, um, it's just to divide my, to find my center. So I have a couple marks on the side and then in the center that you can't see. You know, I think you can see one of the marks up here. I try and find my center. So I like to try and avoid, um, you know, plopping anything right in the center. And also uh, helps me to be less likely to, to divide the canvas in half. A lot of you people- know, When we were in art class as kindergartners, they told us that the center was the most important thing. That's a hard thing to overcome. Wow, I didn't, I don't remember hearing about that in yeah. kindergarten. <laughs> well, or you go, you know, a camera, you know, they have the the little round circle and in, in right in the middle and it's like, yeah. So anyway, that's, that was always hard for me is to, I always wanted to center everything. Yeah. And I think our brains uh, naturally want to center something and we're very aware when something's just slightly off center and then it feels wrong. Yep. Um, and, and then a lot of people will, you know, we'll divide their canvas in thirds and find their, you know, their their focal point area or center of interest. I learned from Ken Bacchus's webinar yesterday that um, he utilizes focal 
focal point and um, center of interest as two different things. Uh, so uh, it was it was interesting how we all have our, a different vocabulary, different vocabulary as instructors um, about you know different elements of, of creating a painting. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. So I typically will find the center and then try to avoid it. <laughs> okay, um, I, um, I was inspired by my fall trip. Uh, find center third. Sorry, I'm going over my notes here. Um, have I know a lot of people have heard about the term NOTAN, uh, and I think there might be some people out there who may not have heard of the term NOTAN. Um, I know you you know what it is, right, Eric? Yeah, yeah. Uh, basically, basically uh, black, black and white, and white. Drawing. drawing. Right. So I learned the idea of NOTAN from John Barry Raybould. And he has um, uh, the Virtual Art Academy. And um, I learned before he even made the, he was making notes and starting to put together the, uh, the academy. But I learned from him uh, how to create these, um, these notans. And uh, notan is a Japanese term that's loosely um, uh, translated as black and, black and white design. And I, that's always kind of stuck in my head uh, in terms of how I see. And I've done a lot of notans over, of course I bring it up and I don't have my sketchbook with me. Um, I'm, not a, I'm not a big sketcher. I, I see in shapes more than I see in line. And, um, and Paul Crowder will kill me for saying that because he's a sketchbook king. Um, anyway, I digress. Uh, I, see, I see the world in shapes. And when I'm, I also think about how much dark and light I have. So a, a dominant value. So when I look at this overall scene here, to me, it's going to be a dominant middle value. And then mm -hmm. my light, my light values that will poke through the tree will be the elements of interest that are going to help lead the eye through the painting. And then my darks that are are also going to do the same. And uh, I will need, once I start painting, on top of this, I'll have an idea of, um, you know, how a little, I'll probably push my darks a little bit more in places that will help lead your eye through. Okay. I probably, I will not get to the end of that because we have a limited time, but I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll get going. You want me to show that video? Um, really quickly. So this okay. is an underpainting. What people are going to see on the video is me doing my initial sketch, uh, laying in the pastel which is applied really light, the videos goes fast. So the, the, the underpainting is created with pastel. It's done really light pressure. Then I take, um, I don't have it, uh, terpenoid. And um, this used to be a filbert brush. And then I paint uh, and wet all the pigment around. And then it creates kind of like this, um, watercolor effect and then it I dr it dries and then I'm ready to go. So yeah, go ahead. If you don't mind, go ahead and show okay, them. Here we go. Here. So there's not too much pigment. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Okay. There's not too much pigment pigment applied there. And in inside the turp jars, just that much, there's hardly any terpenoid in there. And so when I'm up, I'm trying to keep my colors as clean. You don't want to mush everything all around. Then you'll create mud. And now I'm taking a dry towel and lifting some of the areas that I don't want to have as much pigment on. Ta-da! Ta okay, that was the, <laughs> I posted that yesterday. Okay. Okay. All right. Terrific. Uh, okay. Let's get started because you've got about 20, 23 minutes, something like that. Okay. So one more thing about the composition. Um, I have this nice dark pattern moving through here and then I'll create the, the leaves and stuff like that will come, come down here. But that's all detail work that I say till the end. It's like putting in the, the twinkle in the, the highlight in the eyeball or, yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to start creating some 
just building my pastel up. And my primary uh, workhorses are Terry Ludwig pastels and unisons. And for me, it's not about the hardness or softness of the pastel at this stage. Um, it is about the color, the value, and the temperature. Okay. And um, so I just need to share that with those who are familiar with the pastel on medium. Okay, terrific. But, okay. All right. So I'm just, is it okay if I have a couple minutes to kind of get into it? Yeah, of course. Okay. Go for All it. Right. Um, I'll show you my messy pile. Love it. Uh-oh. All right. So... I'm going to reestablish. I'm going to go ahead and reestablish a little bit of my. What is your surface? My surface is a U art. It's literally the. I have a hard time painting and talking at the same time. Um, is literally the letter U and then art. Uh -huh. uh, standard surface. It's a. Um, this is the 400 grit. It comes in different varying grits. So it's like sandpaper. It's literally, yeah, you'll, if I stop, if I, can you hear, hear this? Yeah. Yeah. It's most oil painters, um, uh, that I go and paint with, unfortunately have to get used to this sound. Kind of like fingers on a blackboard. But then you be, then you come you 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 learn to love me eat regardless of that when I when I paint with you. Somebody, I'm gonna I'm just gonna make comments while you're doing this. It looks like we have somebody from Turkey watching. So you you don't have to respond. You just keep painting. Okay. Thanks. Right. That'd be great. Trying to get my study up here. It's too light. So what I think about when I'm picking up my colors, you know, what, what's the value? What's the temperature? That's too light. I'm cooling this off as it goes underneath this mass of color. Italy. Germany. Now nah, they're stepping up. Netherlands. The minute I mentioned somebody from somewhere, all of a sudden everybody starts putting their place in. <laughs> uh, love it. Mexico. Brazil. India. Oh, you're popular, Kim. British Columbia. Ireland. 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 All these places I want to go paint. Let's go. I'm all, I'd love to get to Ireland. I wish I'd taken your New Zealand. Uh, yeah. Gone to well, New Zealand with you guys. I'm going to do it again someday, except there's so many other places I want to go first. We're getting ready to, to close out the Russia thing pretty soon. That's going to be fun. Oh, somebody watching from America. Hey. hey. Hollywood, New Hampshire. Well, I better not start naming states. I'll have to name all 50 of them. <laughs> okay. I'm really utilize an extremely light touch so you i can just the side find it. of your uh, your pastel i'm Is sorry it, are you holding it like the side yes hold it I up don't... to the camera so we can see how you're holding it real close even closer okay good yeah this is a better probably a better one i'll hold it like that okay good side. And, you. But you can also use these square ones by Terry Ludwig. You can uh, use the edge to do, you know, fine detail. Let me press it in there. All right. 
So I want to fill out this yellow digging the rhythm I have this is the only way I can paint I don't start uh, I don't start finding my the details until much later in the process right and it is a little noisy <laughs> Somebody referred to you as dancing pastels. They love the sound of the dancing pastels. I do too. I love that. There's a fabulous uh, pastelist by the name of Dawn Emerson. Now that woman, she does an incredible, she, she literally dances. She has the music on when she's demonstrating. She's dancing with the music on and she's just poetry in motion. She looks like oh. a, a ballet. When she paints, it's awesome. You yeah, might cons we'll consider some, she could come for the one of your uh, conventions, one of your live things. Yeah. It's funny. I'm used to painting with music on too. Okay, well, you want me to sing? Yeah, go ahead. I think not. <laughs> Is there any way you can get the camera closer to the canvas? These people speak up if they want something and I try to get, to, get, get give them what they want. Oh yeah, baby. Oh yeah, baby. All right. Yeah. Is that is that good enough? Yeah, as long as you work on the area we can see. Yeah, good. Oh, you mean like pull it close. Oh, I'm holding it. No, you can no, so they can see you paint. Yeah, hold on. And stack it on a bunch of books or something. Yeah. Is that better? Yeah, that's good. Thank you. Okay. Do your hands get really dry because of all the pastel dust? They they do. And I just live with baby wipes here. In fact, I'll probably have to go get one soon. I forgot to grab them. And, and what about all the dust that's, that's generated in the air? Are you ever concerned about that? So right down here, this box is called an artist's air. Yeah. And you can, it's attached over here and on underneath it's attached to a HEPA filter that's turned upside down so it's and it creates a, a draw, but I'm not going to turn it on because you guys wouldn't yeah. actually, maybe I'll turn it on so you don't have to listen to me. <laughs> no. But no, but normally it's pulling the dust out of the air. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yay. Absolutely. Okay. We want you to live a long time. Live Thanks, long and Sarah. prosper.
Artist Air, right? Did you say? Artistair.com, absolutely. Okay. And it's probably saved, you know, it it reduces the um a, a good 65 to 70 percent when it's on it, it just draws it sucks it right down into the the space right into the the tray below me or below my painting because this can be a, a dusty medium for sure In, in case you just tuned in, we're watching Kim Lordier, who is a pastel superstar, and uh, uh, and so she's she's working over an underpainting she had done earlier. And we've got Kim. We're down to about ten minutes left. What? Yeah, I know it goes quickly. That's why I try to keep things moving. Yeah yeah okay this 18 by or 24 by 18 is probably not going to get finished let me just do a couple little what i call sparkly so you can see what would actually I'll, I'll try and i'll try and finish this today and post it this weekend not today but get a little bit closer but you can see how it would start to add in i would never do that i would never start adding these little highlights at this stage Right. Um, I need to find my shapes, define my shapes a little bit more before I would uh, right. get into this. Um, but I want to get a little light value to help, you know, lead that viewer's eye. I love this movement. And so I want to reinforce that. This is going to have to be darker in value. But just to get a little bit of, you know, opening, opening up and it looks like just a middle value mass mess right now. But if I get a few key little lights in here, it'll help to see the bigger shape that I had intended. I'm using the can. I always have a, a mirror, a mirror behind me, but the, the camera's working pretty good here for that. Um, let me do a couple more. Let me just do a little highlight on one of these trees. Um, so my light source is coming from the right. And so I'm going to make sure that it just right and above. So I want to make sure it's going to hit Yesterday, Larry Moore was talking about varying the edges so that, and, and uh, you're doing a terrific job of varying your edges. Yeah. So, yeah. And he's an edge master. Uh, absolutely. Um, I, I purposely did not watch him yesterday because he's a genius and <laughs> um, I didn't need to make myself more nervous than I am currently. Oh, they have nothing to be nervous about. I, I wouldn't hurt you. These I will, people are all our friends. I know, I know. I will uh, be watching him probably tonight. So, I, I, again, I would not be adding any of these tree trunks at this stage. Um, let's see how that... You got a pretty big audience today. Well, say hi to. Well, I guess I I can say hi to everybody. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> I'm very appreciative. That's all very gestural at the at the beginning for me, and I I would like to encourage those of you who are, you know, interested in painting in pastel. Uh, 
to avoid getting going in too detailed at the beginning, try and, and keep it as loose for as long as you possibly can. Um, it really helps to, uh, it, it makes you understand the medium better if you can stay looser longer and then you're able to find, um, it's just like a, a using different types of brushes where um, you know, you, your flat brush makes a different stroke than your filbert and uh, you know, a, a hog's bristle brush uh, makes a much different type of stroke oops, than, um, um, than a synthetic uh, yep. round, let's say for watercolor. Um, so if you can keep the pastel application light your shapes large, and then you build to the detail. And that detail, I really like to encourage the folks that um, study with me to stay away from your lightest light, except for maybe making one mark so you have something in which to gauge it to, but stay as close to your, um, you know, for the most part, this is all, is all middle value. And then I'll wait to the very end to put my lightest lights and my darkest darks. I'll just tap them in. Yeah. Um, you should know that somebody commented that they've always felt intimidated. They have pastels, but they've always felt intimidated until now watching you. So you have okay. inspired. That's someone. awesome. It's a fun medium. And for those of you who are familiar or, or generally paint in oil, um, it's a very similar process. If, if you, you can go see my, that little video time-lapse video uh, on my Facebook page and please ask, feel free to ask me questions through, through Facebook or through my um, website. I'm more than happy to share with you guys. Yeah, and here's her her website, Kim Fancher, oh, or yeah. And you can, it's probably just Kim Lordier on Facebook. Uh, Kim, yeah, Kim Lordier, um, or, or just Google, you know, Kim Lordier and my yeah. site should be the first thing that comes up. Yeah. Well, you have a few more minutes if you want to keep painting. Okay, okay. We like to watch. All righty. Um, yeah, here I'm going into the detail when I just talked about not. Well, you're trying to show us. Yeah. Kind of I trying to develop like, a little like bit of a shadow it. side of that. And I like to vary the colors. So this has a greenish note. This this shadow side will be a little bit more purple. When we were in the Sierra's painting, <clears throat> we were, you know, California has been truly devastated by wildfires. And we were painting in the smoke filled with smoke filled skies and, and the air quality. And so a lot of the um, a lot of the colors that we were experiencing had this, the, the light was really, really warm in a lot of places. And the shadows would turn more turquoise because of the orange quality of the sun, of yeah. the light that was hitting. And uh, so it it creates for some much different color, uh, d different yeah, types of uh, color studies. I remember when the fires were going on, I, the plein air painters of America were down in Catalina and um, we, so all the paintings had this kind of muted yeah. color to them, but they were fascinating. And you'd be able to look at them a hundred years later and go, oh, that's when the fire was going on. Yeah, uh, we are definitely chroniclers. Chroniclers, is that a word? It is now. You just <laughs> created it. Leave it to me um, of what's happening with our, our planet. And our times, you know. So when I'm when I'm choosing colors at this stage, just to because I'm not gonna be able to bring this to any kind of uh, conclusion at, during this time, I'm always thinking the value and the warm and coolness of it. And so when I'm thinking in the background, I'm gonna cool cool the temperature of my color off. And as I come forward, I'm going to you know keep it slightly warmer in value. And um, but then I, this all this down here, a lot of times I would just come in and, and try and paint, you know, lots of grasses, but I just want to keep it a, a color field more like this for those, if there's anybody still watching, you can kind of see how, where I'm going with, 
Okay. Yeah, you changed your composition, it looks like. Yeah, I'm not one to redo a, a study. Um, I think that I, I was an illustration, an illustration major, and I really hated redoing uh, comps and redoing yeah. thumbnails and that kind of thing. Yeah. I'm just, I want to do something new, create something different. And so this, this was a great, had a great feeling to it, this painting, and I just wanted to develop something larger. So I'm looking forward to actually painting this afternoon on this. <laughs> Well, we wish we could see you, but I know you'll post it and uh, yeah. everybody will, will enjoy seeing that. Um, should I send it more... to you or should uh, I send you... it to Ali rather, or should you I just put it on my own page? You can just go back into the comments and, and I would do it later tonight after, because that way you could answer some questions. Because okay. a lot of people come and watch the replays after work. So oh, uh, I'll, I'll definitely do that. Yeah, just post it in the comments later. That'd be terrific. Absolutely. Just, and just also if that somebody's... If somebody's you know has any questions about the pastel medium please uh if not on on this go ahead and go to my facebook page and and shoot me a question or instant message me or um whatever yeah that whatever message. technology you want to use yeah, yeah. <laughs> well kim this has been delightful it's always fun having you on and and seeing you. you and and uh catching up and you were you were quite an inspiration today so thank you so much for that so Thank you, you so no much for reason having me. To be nervous. This is my first time. Yeah. Yay. Thank you, Eric, very much. Yes. Good luck for the convention. Keeping our, my fingers crossed, the convention goes next next year. Yeah. And what? Uh, so, from your perspective, for people who have never been, what's that experience like? It's and awesome. I'm always telling them, but they never believe me. It's awesome. Um, <laughs> and even you know, I think the first time you go. If you're you don't have your own um, community that's there and you're by yourself, uh, there's people are just there and welcome you with open arms. And uh, the folks that are that are instructing are always more than welcome to are are always open and willing to answer any questions. And and uh, it's it's a terrific experience. Larry said yesterday, he said, you know, plein air painters are the nicest people in the world. He said, they're happier than anybody I know. And I think that that spirit comes across at the convention. We have, as you know, we have an orientation at the beginning of the convention. So people who come alone are paired up with three, four, five other people so they can have dinner groups and lunch groups and things like yeah. that. And they end yeah. up, you know, making a lot of friends, sometimes lifelong friends. We even yeah. One yeah, I've definitely met made, got married. I've made great friends through the convention and uh, grateful to you for putting that on. Well, I love doing it. I hope we're able to do it again. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Stay safe, everybody. And thank you for coming in and seeing me.